Hi everyone and welcome to the fourth design video in this series. In this video we'll be looking at latches, one of the building blocks of memory. In the previous videos we've looked at combinational logic. This means the outputs are a combination of the inputs, and only the inputs. They have no memory of past inputs to the system. In this video, we'll be looking at sequential logic. Sequential logic enables our circuit to remember one or more of its past inputs. This is a fundamentally different kind of circuit, with one input coming after another. Truth tables for sequential circuits must also account for prior inputs to the system. Let's jump right in by looking at a circuit that can remember a single bit of information. This design is called a set reset latch. As we can see, something a bit different is going on. The outputs from the NOR gates are fed back as inputs to the opposing NOR gate. This circuit is called bistable, meaning it has two stable states. In one state, we say the latch is set, i.e. its output is a 1, and in the other state, we say it is reset, i.e. its output is a 0. Which way we label set, reset, and Q, the output, is mostly convention. We also see Q prime, sometimes written Q bar, i.e. Q with a line over it. This indicates that it outputs the opposite of Q. This can sometimes be useful to optimize subsequent gates attached to the output of the latch. By toggling the set and reset signals, we can change the state of the latch. This works because of the way NOR gates work. When either input is high, the output is off. So when we switch on the set signal, the corresponding NOR gate has a high input. So its output switches off. Both inputs to the second NOR gate are now off, so its output switches on. As a result, an input to the first NOR is held on even after the set signal is switched off. So the latch remains in its new stable state. An SR latch is the building block of static memory. You'll sometimes hear the term SRAM, meaning static random access memory. The static term here tells you that the RAM is built using a latch as its basis, as opposed to how DRAM works. We'll now look at a clock-gated SR latch. This kind of SR latch will only change value when the clock signal is on. We could of course invert the clock signal so the latch changes value only when the clock input is off. This is quite easy to do. We AND the S and R input signals with the clock signal. This is a useful building block for what's coming in the next design video. Thanks for watching, and in the next episode, we'll see how we can use a clocked SR latch to build a data flip-flop, which we'll use for the registers of our computer processor.